Welcome friends to A Shot of Code. Today we're going to be looking at the internals of promises and how they allow us to order asynchronous events. Uh, to do this we're going to use something called a thunk. Um, we'll start off with how, we might, how, how this happens in normal callbacks uh, and then we'll look at a thunk which, which is pretty much um, you know, the basis of how a promise is is implemented. You know, a promise is a big library. It provides a lot of things, but but the thunk is uh, is the basis of it. So let's let's jump in here and start with normal callbacks. So say I had a function do something, and that took a task, some effort, and a callback. Um, and if I said console.log, um, so we'll just have a started task just so we can see that part there. Um, and then we had a set timeout. So this will um, essentially be, you know, mimicking a call to a database or a web server, some, some asynchronous event. And that'll take a certain amount of effort and we'll say uh, the result of this will just be the task plus completed uh, and when that happens we will call our callback and pass that data to it okay now if i now call do something and we say the task is task task one and the effort is one second, and then our callback, which takes um, a result, and we do console.log result there. Um, so let's just open up PowerShell, save that one off, and do node index.js. All right, so we got our started task one, which is in here um, from calling do something. And then after one second, we got task one completed. Just put a space in there. Okay, so that's all fine. Um, now say we had two methods calling this. So we had task two, I clear that down. And run it again now you can see task one and task two both started immediately so they're asynchronous and they're non-blocking um, and then we got task one completed and task two completed which looks great now the problem comes now if you needed to use the results of task one in task two um, and particularly if task one actually takes longer than task two to complete so they both start at the same time, but we're actually getting the callback for task two in here before task one, and that, and that would be a problem. Um, so how can we solve this? Well, one way is simply to take do something and put it in the callback, i.e. task one has completed. And if we run that now, we get started task one, task one completed, started task two, task two completed. So that's worked. You know, when we get to task two, we'll have our data from task one. But you notice that we couldn't start task two until task one had completed. So we've lost that non-blocking aspect. So, you know, that works, but it's not very optimal at all. Um, so with normal callbacks, you can solve this. Um, you know, you can get a loop and some local variables and check who which one's completed and if it's completed we can move on to this but you know basically got to store off the completed status of each task and if you can picture up to 10 tasks or something it, it, it's quite complicated and, and prone to error so this is what promises can solve for us along with the other things that promises does um, you know promises help solve that period of death um, and they ensure that we only get our call back once and it's a success or a response. But they also allow us to um, uh, synchronize our asynchronous events. 
basically basically take control ourselves of when we use the response you know with with these callbacks they are just called as soon as it completes um, but with promises we we take that control back a little bit more so to show this we're going to turn our function into a thunk um, so it's no longer going to accept the callback immediately it's actually going to return um, a function that takes a callback as a parameter um, so do something now returns a function so we need to grab that function here um, so this is no longer needed there um, and the same with task 2 that no longer passes the function so each of these calls will initiate our task um, but we're not going to give the callback function at that point we're going to pass it into task 1 this function here it's going to be this parameter callback at a later date so I would then say task one and that is where I pass my function and get the result here uh, and similar for task two okay now so how does this work um, what we need to do in our thunk is there's, there's two scenarios either um, our task completes before we get the callback passed to us or our task hasn't completed before we get the callback passed to us so let's let's look at, um, at those scenarios so say this function completed very quickly and so we run task one here it completes then we're calling task one passing in this callback so we're coming in here the set timeout has already completed so data is already set um, so we need to be able to tell um, what that data is um, so we can't define it here we need to actually define it outside and I'll define another one we'll come back to a function um, so this this function will close over that data when it returns so we're saying okay set timer has completed before we get to line 19 so data will have a value okay so if data has a value that's fine we know our process is completed we can just return that data um, so we can call the callback with data now if it hadn't completed we need to be able to call back when it completes which will be in this section here so if we store the callback in um, our internal fn function then in set timeout we store our data but we say is fn set i.e. has have we got the callback function if we have then we can just call it with data um, if not then we just exit here and wait until this is called because then when this is called we will have data and thereby we'll just call the callback here so there's those two scenarios um, that we need to be able to handle and by using the closure over data and fn we can do that just make it a bit smaller so it's all on one screen all right so if we run that now we get task one and task two completed um, so i started asynchronously but we're still getting task two completed before task one so let's do what we did before we'll take task two and we'll simply put it into the callback of task one completed now last time 
with normal callbacks, this meant we lost our non-blocking. Um, but if we run it now, we see that we're still kicking off both task one and task two at the same time, because this is where that actually happens. Um, and then we get in the correct order, task one and then task two, even though task one takes two seconds to complete. Um, so yeah, that, this, this thunk is how we, we take control back ourselves of the time that um, we look at the result. Uh, yeah, okay, there you go. I um, hope, hope that was informative. Thanks very much. Bye.